Welcome everyone, everybody to, uh, to our, um, uh, this evening meeting of the Colloquium Science Meet Art or Art Meets Science. Uh, this is uh, the first in this new year. And we have two excellent speakers, one from the art, one from science. It's Katica Kulavkova, speaking on the identity of the writer between history and fiction uh, through some Balkan examples, and uh, Gabon Zabo, Harmony of Molecules. Uh, now I would like to ask my colleague, Violeta Dinescu, to proceed with the first speaker from the side of art and introduce uh, Katica to all of you. Thank you very much, Yannis. Before I speak, I would like to say hello to our president and to ask, uh, uh, to ask you, uh, dear Herr President, to, mm -hmm. to bring us uh, the beginning with your wonderful words. Yeah, um, uh, thank you, uh, Violetta, for your announcement. And um, welcome to you all in the new year for this uh, wonderful uh, event. It uh, fits the uh, philosophy of our Academy of uh, Sciences and Arts perfectly. Namely, science meets arts and uh, arts meet uh, sciences. Thank you uh, very much to both deans for your uh, initiative to this uh, seminar. We, in the last year, uh, we already had uh, presentations uh, in music, in uh, painting, manufacturing, together with uh, talks on uh, aesthetical aspects of science. And this evening, we will learn more about the role of uh, writers between history and fiction. And uh, I also look uh, forward to the harmony of molecules in the second talk. In general, we think uh, remembering school experiments in chemistry, that chemistry is uh, connected with the uh, smell and sometimes with stink and uh, even smoke, but actually, at least in the uh, molecular, molecular models, it is a beautiful meso world of complex structures between the micro world of uh, atoms and elementary particles in physics and the macro world of our everyday life. I suppose we will enjoy these talks and uh, so thank you for your attention and let's start. Thank you very much. President Klaus Meinzer. I would like now to present our first speaker, Katica Kulavkova. She is born in 1951, and she is a Macedonian poet, essayist, short story writer, and professor in the philology faculty at the Cyril and Methodius University of Skopje. She was a professor of theory of literature at the University of Zagreb in Croatia. Her first book of poems appears already in 75. Since then, she has published more than 30 books of poetry in Macedonian and in translation, as well as two collections of short stories, one play, and approximately 40 other books as both author or editor. In 2003, she became a member of the Academy of Sciences and Arts in Macedonia, and she is member of the European Academy of Sciences and Arts also in Salzburg. Um, as of 2019, Kulavkova is also an executive committee member of the International Association for Semiotic Studies. She is also the vice president of Penn International London. Her poetry and short stories have been translated into many languages and published in numerous books and anthologies. Her areas of interest include literary poetics and hermeneutics, Balkan cultures and identities, Macedonian and South Slavic literatures, intertextual theory, and synesthetic method of interpretation of literary texts. 
Katica Kulavkova has also been the editor of several anthologies of Macedonian and world short stories, essays and poetry, and several readers. I'm happy to invite you, Katica, to present us our world. Okay, you thank are. you, Violeta. Uh, at the beginning of our discussion uh, for the subject and topic of my lecture uh, in the framework of uh, European Academy, uh, under the main topic, uh, science meets uh, art, I, because I didn't know at that time um, this main topic, I proposed the topic of um, uh, uh, identity of some writers uh, on the Balkan, but not only on the Balkan, but my example should be from the Balkan. Uh, to two or even more literatures and cultures because of particular situations, historical, cultural, linguistic, etc., etc. But seeing uh, the last few uh, uh, webinar of our academy, I uh, decided to change uh, my topic um, uh, in order to be more more uh, connected, uh, closer connected to the main topic. So I will speak um, about uh, in interpretative syncretism in the art, in the interpretation of the art, and uh, uh, particularly in interpretation of literary work uh, in uh, um, uh, to this evening uh, um, case, uh, interpretation of one poem of our great uh, Macedonian poet, Blaze Koneski, linguist also, uh, and uh, first uh, president of Macedonian Academy. So um, uh, I will connect uh, uh, literary science, hermeneutics, and, um, and poetry uh, seen as a Imminent form of art. Uh, my um, initial theoretical position is that uh, uh, at the end of the 19th century, but especially in the 20th century, during the 20th century, uh, we have um, methodological pluralism. So we have many critical methods uh, uh, used uh, in order to interpret uh, uh, work, work of art and literary works or literary text. Um, chronologically view, we have, for example, kind of um, uh, development, evolution of uh, these uh, methods, uh, starting with um, Russian formalism, and uh, linguistic approach by Saussure, De Saussure, then uh, uh, Bakhtin and uh, his uh, philosophy of uh, language and socio sociolo sociological methods, then structuralism and uh, uh, post-structuralism and feminism and Marxist criticism, and the uh, post-colonialism, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I was uh, thinking a lot about uh, this um, linear development of, uh, of critical methods, uh, sometimes very um, orthodox uh, uh, chronological order. And um, I decided to, to think uh, 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 differently uh, uh, to 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 uh, to look for uh, the um, shared point between the methods. Is it possible to uh, to uh, make com combination between uh, two or three or more different methods? Because all interpretative strategies and critical methods are connected. And uh, uh, um, 
make kind of uh, accumulate accumulation of uh, of uh, uh, different uh, uh, scientific uh, paradigm paradigms or or episteme so different uh, uh, different priorities what to uh, look for uh, in the um, uh, work of art uh, I was thinking about a uh, uh, few options, terminological, and I decided to uh, not speak about uh, um, uh, interpretative um, synthesis because it, it's too pretentious, but uh, about syncretism. You know that uh, Ioannis is here the, the, the word syncretism uh, uh, and its etymology is connected to it, the Cretian uh, coalition in the old past, past when uh, they they need the to needed to uh, to be unified and integrated as different uh, ethnicities in order to to defend them from uh, uh, outside attack, etc. So, so syncretism, syncret is uh, provian from from uh, this uh, Cretian uh, history, but also it is not possible to speak about uh, total absolute syncretism uh, uh, because the syn syncretic approach doesn't uh, uh, make uh, Macedonian Salah taking uh, elements from all possible uh, methods, existing methods. But uh, I suggest, I, I propose um, a term of moderate syn syncretism, syncretism which is, um, which is uh, uh, economical and uh, efficacy. So we can speak about uh, a kind of trans method, trans aesthetic uh, method uh, uh, inside the literary hermeneutic. I am not so uh, expert about all art, even even I can apply. It is possible to apply this method uh, for uh, the other kind of work of art, but, uh, but uh, especially for literary text. So <laughs> this uh, trans-methodological strategy has not synthetical pretension, just an essay of reflective freedom of interpreting one poem or one novel or one short story etc um, why syncretism is not uh, uh, ordinary eclecticism uh, we could for example take uh, um, into account this uh, uh, term of eclectic eclecticism but but also uh, Greek by origin, but uh, I think that it is uh, more uh, more uh, available for different styles, not for different critical critical uh, methods. So the uh, imperative syncretism uh, can. Uh, can bring to us a dialogical um, approach about uh, a dialogical method to us uh, uh, this uh, dialogical method was proposed by Tsvetan Todorov and other French uh, uh, theoreticians some of them uh, Yulia Kristeva, etc. Some of them uh, Bulgarian by by origin, but also also some uh, uh, structuralist and post structuralist. But uh, 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 the notion of uh, dialogue is uh, always open and uh, never never um, never strictly uh, uh, defined. Uh, in any case, uh, I think uh, it is possible to speak uh, uh, using uh, more contemporary uh, term terminology, uh, which is um, trans -met methodology or inter methods. So to take uh, to take uh, uh, 
um, not only available but uh, complementary uh, uh, elements and notions and uh, uh, topics from one to other uh, uh, critical methods in order to to make a good and uh, acceptable and objective and uh, relevant interpretation uh, uh, and understanding of one poem. Um, if we accept, for example, the idea that the critical methods are not absolutely orthodox and conservative for all time, but only in their initial inception, then it is possible to be creative in the act of concrete application of existed critical methods. I think that uh, the, the act of uh, reading and uh, interpretation of uh, one poem uh, can be creative in a different way, but still creative in comparison of, uh, uh, with the, the act of writing. Uh, uh, the, the, the act of uh, creation is not connected only with um, uh, uh, art, but also art uh, performing art, but also with uh, with science. So, so um, some kind of stereotypical uh, represent, representation or images about uh, science uh, is um, uh, more uh, more. Um, uh, uh, with less uh, creative dimension, I think is not accept acceptable uh, because, uh, especially uh, when we are speaking about 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 poetry and uh, art. So uh, this syncretic interpretation uh, is kind of uh, the canon organization of the orthodox methods like uh, linguistic one typical philosophical one phenomenological or etc psychological anthropological mythopoetic one historical sociological and cultural so i uh, prefer to 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 think uh, always uh, with the kind of um, um, Mm, uh, awareness about uh, 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 dominant aspect of the uh, uh, poem or text, uh, which is the, the object of uh, of interpretation. Uh, it is very very uh, complicated uh, uh, topic, but I only will. Um, uh, uh, make one. Um, mm, I will evoke the mm, theory of uh, Michael Bakhtin about about carnivalization. So we can we can uh, uh, talk about uh, carnivalization of uh, uh, the the act of act of uh, uh, interpretation of the the work of art uh, if we we. Uh, accept this carnivalization as a uh, mixed feeling of uh, the world, culture and, and art. At the same time, because uh, uh, lyric poetry is uh, uh, maybe more monological and more intimate, um, I uh, also uh, want to mention Carl uh, Gustav Jung, who suggested that the art of a language, uh, like poetry, uh, has imminent intention to be confessional. I'm, uh, it is not an orthodox conservative uh, 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 approach, but um, uh, uh, not in the sense of personal, individual uh, 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 confession. And not uh, as a kind of uh, religious uh, sacral etc confession but however even even the poet speaks about the inquisition in the name of the inquisition or in the name of of the um, um, uh, mountain 
in driven of any object, uh, uh, animal or uh, some phenomenon, he tries, the author, the, the poet tries to, to, to enter in the, in the intern and uh, uh, feelings of, uh, and um, dimension of this topic of this object. So always there is a kind of, uh, of um, uh, confessional approach in a very, very large sense of uh, this, this uh, word. So, so because of this fact, uh, uh, psychological, archetypal uh, approach to poetry is uh, a very useful and uh, uh, very, very present uh, last uh, few uh, decades. I, I will not read uh, and mention all this uh, detailed aspect about different uh, methods. Just now to speak about uh, um, one uh, first uh, um, interpretation, I called it uh, uh, a ritualistic, cathartic interpretation of one poem by Wisława Szymborska, Polish poet, Nobel uh, Prize poet. Very short one uh, um, on the topic of uh, memory of uh, her parents. Very interesting one, and I I uh, showed that uh, this poem is a kind of uh, confessional and ritualistic uh, act, uh, which is not only um, act of uh, uh, the writer, but also we can uh, we, uh, we can accept it, adopt it as. Uh, as uh, an act of uh, reading. And uh, after this uh, experience uh, of mine, experience of interpretation, and because of my experience as a literary hermeneutic on the faculty in, in, in introduction, introducing uh, this, uh, this uh, subject uh, as a particular modular uh, uh, subject for our students of comparative literature, I continue to, to, uh, to develop uh, this, uh, this inter method. So in this second part, um, uh, I will speak about uh, this uh, uh, two um, examples of interpretative application. The, the question is, is it possible to make a pattern of, of uh, syncretic uh, uh, interpretation? I'm not sure that, uh, and uh, my intention is not uh, uh, focused on the, on, on the construction of uh, some uh, uh, rigid uh, and uh, um, orthodox pattern, but uh, an orientational uh, um, some orientational model of, uh, of uh, uh, interpretation, how to read the poem and not only read, but how to understand the poem in the context of culture, of history, of inter-human uh, relations, uh, uh, according to, uh, to the stylistic uh, dominant of the epoch, etc., etc. So, so here is this, uh, 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 essay about Wisława Szymborska, but, but uh, uh, last year I was preoccupied uh, with uh, um, uh, the critical methods with uh, my colleagues from Macedonia. It was a, a big uh, project by Macedonia Academy of Sciences and Arts, and I uh, decided to, to, to interpret the poem by Blaze Koneski. Uh, both of the poems, I, I realized uh, later that uh, are connected to it, uh, time and memories. So personal memories uh, uh, with um, capacity to be accepted as, uh, as uh, um, 
our memories, memories of the the, the reader, even in a reflective and uh, transformational way, not not exactly the same. But so um, I choose the poem Prince Marco Marco's Church by Blaze Koneski. Um, the, the interpretation of this poem is very complex and and give me possibility of total freedom of combination of uh, uh, different episteme, interpretative episteme. Why? Because uh, it is uh, one of uh, the uh, poem of a big uh, cycle of uh, poems. Uh, by Koneski, connected, in, inspired by uh, by the uh, folk legend, Sedonian uh, folk legend. You know that a lot of uh, uh, folkloric cultures and literature, uh, oral literature and legends and uh, myths on the Balkan sometimes uh, are shared between different uh, uh, people and culture, not only Slavic, but also with uh, other because uh, of the, the shared uh, uh, history in the past. Uh, I think uh, sometimes that uh, the notion of uh, a nation is not uh, um, so new from 19th century, but uh, from from the antiquity, but we can speak about in some other time. So um, why uh, I choose this uh, lyrical uh, poem by, by Koneski? First, because of uh, its um, link or connection with uh, the, the well-known uh, collective memory, collective symbols, and uh, among this collective symbols, the most important one, important one connected with, uh, actualized in this poem and in one other poem, Fortress, I have no time to, to explain everything, but uh, the, the principal topic is uh, how to, what is the sense of building monumental uh, monumental um, uh, churches or fortress or wall or something mon monumental, even even uh, 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 artistic, uh, etc. This is a question which is not Balkan one, not European, but from a universal, uh, uh, universal question and topic. Why this topic is um, uh, so important for this po uh, poem and uh, so important to, to uh, humankind uh, and to the uh, human civilization? Why? Because, uh, because um, to make, to build, to create something uh, monumental for the eternity so the idea of uh, 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 eternity, of eternal uh, monumentality of uh, our, um, uh, what is it, works, like church or fortress. Uh, we have this fortress in uh, Prilep, uh, in Ohrid, you know, etc. And many churches in Macedonia are so beautiful that it is uh, monumental. But during, and in order to, to build them, Prince Marco or King Marco uh, was uh, pushed to uh, misuse, to use the life and uh, uh, the sacrifice of, uh, of the ordinary people. Many, many, uh, uh, children died during this uh, this process of building because there was, wasn't um, a free woman and uh, uh, man to keep the, the child and they the children and they they were uh, they were uh, really um, pushed into into uh, death 
Konecki is um, uh, extraordinarily good in projection and reflection of the collective images of this uh, uh, good evil. We have in Macedonian language uh, one expression, good evil, evil good, zlo dobro. Zlo is evil and good is dobro. Uh, uh, as, as one word. So some good monumental things uh, as René Girard says are made on the base of some evil. And now the question is is it possible to be economical to be rational and to make something uh, good for the collectivity community, for the world, for the eternity, for the art, etc., uh, making very small sacrifice. As a uh, lyrical subject, Koneski in, uh, uh, in his uh, poem, uh, uh, projecting the, 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 the personality of uh, King Marco uh, when it is uh, he's uh, already old and starts to rethinking the, um, uh, his, uh, his uh, experiences in his, uh, his life etc. Uh, Katica, uh, may I interrupt you all, uh, shortly? Okay. Uh, excuse me. Um, May I tell you that uh, uh, you do not have more time now. It's, okay. it's so complex what you are presenting us. Yeah. But, uh, you, um, you, we have to limit it on a half an hour. So please, uh, okay. in some okay. five minutes. <laughs> okay. Oh, I will, I will just finish now. Excuse me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Thank you. So, so sorry. Uh, so the poem is confessional because uh, uh, the lyrical subject, the poet uh, uh, in the role and fun function of King Marco uh, ref um, reflects his position, his sin, and uh, try to find uh, um, kind of, uh, of forgiveness and uh, enter in this uh, beautiful church near Skopje and uh, seeing the fresco with uh, Rachel and uh, uh, her child, that child, uh, he, he understood, uh, understand that, uh, that it's, it's uh, a little bit uh, um, late for for this uh, uh, forgiveness, but however, I think that uh, it is uh, the important function and uh, um, effect of this poem is not only the confessional uh, uh, reflection of the of the poet, but the transformation of the reader. Uh, our transformation, reading this poem and. Um, uh, reflecting our, of this uh, universal archetypal evil good good evil we uh, face uh, the basic ethical question of the world not only contemporary but always actual world world uh, here and now so um, i think that um, that uh, this uh, inter method uh, uh, can bring us uh, to one very interesting deep and uh, not not only literary interpretation but at the same time ethical philosophical psychological etc etc and the most important uh, can transform our, our awareness or our um, statement about uh, some ethical question because they are always open and reopen in the history. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Latitia Kulavkova, uh, you open uh, in our vision uh, new dimensions and uh, we already, I think everybody had immediately associations with so deep uh, elements of our culture, our, our tradition also. Uh, please, Ioannis, may I invite you to present now Gabo Navaisabo. Your microphone, your oh. microphone, Ioannis. Uh, somehow it does not work, no? Yes. Okay. I'm thank, here. You. thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, Violeta. Before I go to our colleague Gabor, I would like to make a clarification as a matter of pre silver task. Kartitsa comes from the Republic of Northern Macedonia in Skopje, uh, not from Macedonia, you know, or Sklavo Macedonia. Uh, and in the flow of speaking, the term was is used usually, you know, Macedonia, but we, we know that uh, this is a distinct and well known millennia historic and geographic uh, Hellenic Macedonia, no more. Just full stop. Uh, I would like to now to um, to introduce to uh, to to you our second speaker, which is Professor Gabor Narai Zambo. Uh, Gabor is a full professor of the Department of Theoretical Chemistry at Vos Lorad University, Budapest, Hungary, staff member of Protein Model uh, Research Group and Laboratory of Structural Chemistry and Biology. His research interests so far are with modern uh, structural chemistry and biology. Also, Professor Gabor uh, is the president of the board of trustees for, uh, for um, Joseph uh, Marit Foundation that took over the operation at the University of Veterinary Medicine as for last year. He's a chemist and a second generation, his father too, a uh, member of the Academy of Sciences in Hungary. He has conducted his research projects and science promotion activities in international cooperation and associations respectively. Uh, our colleague Gabor has received many distinctions and awards, such as from the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, Universitata de West Timisoara, Romania, Golden Jubilee Medal, Hungarian Federation of Technical and Scientific Societies, European Association for Chemical and Molecular Sciences, Award for Service, Hungarian Order of Merit, etc., and more. His father established Hungary's first X ray diffraction laboratory. It was uh, very pleased to see this not, you know, reading in the internet, while Gabor, his son, is credited for the foundation of the first laboratory for protein crystallography in Hungary. He has published more than 250 publications in um, refereed journals, eight books on theoretical chemistry, computer-aided molecular design, structural biology, professional affairs, and sustainability as well. For the last 30 or so years, Professor Gabor Daraizabo has published his thoughts on the harmony of molecules. So he's an expert in this field. And really, I'm eager to hear more on this um, fascinating subject. The online platform is yours, dear Gabor. Thank you very much. I do hope that I can go ahead with the uh, slides. Yes. Do you see that? We can see, but you can make it as a presentation for power PowerPoint. You can press, you know, in the bar there is this like a cup, you know, you can. Okay. So uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the possibility to discuss uh, a uh, topic which seems to be interesting and a bit strange. However, I guess that uh, uh, science and arts are two different aspects of uh, the investigation of nature and therefore they should be considered uh, jointly. And uh, this is why I uh, tried to discuss uh, this uh, problem. And I have to call the attention to the fact that brain activity according to the uh, brain scientists, has two aspects, namely a rational one, which is digital and mathematical, sequential, uh, objective, and uh, which can be represented by various formulas, uh, which uh, are strict and there is no uh, possibility for a 
special in, interpretation and uh, therefore it seems to be a bit uh, simple for people, for artists who prefer emotional approach and an emotional approach, which is <clears throat> analogic <clears throat> and pictorial. For example, the um, painter of Mona Lisa uh, is uh, a good example for that because you can think over uh, its meaning for, for uh, years even, and you cannot go to the end. Therefore, these two aspects, however, uh, diverged in the last centuries uh, continuously uh, because uh, science became that uh, important and that strong that it take, took, took the floor and thus we have consequences. The former holistic approach split it in two, that means we are not scientists or thinking people simply, but uh, we are either scientists with mathematics or artists with feelings and beautiful objects. Hello, and, uh, dear, dear Gabor, we cannot see flowing your PowerPoint. It is frozen in, in the first slide. Oh, it doesn't? No, it is, does not. It's only the hormone of molecules. Nothing else. We have to make it in presentation, and then you turn it. You know. Why is it open. paused? I, I, it, it is, it is. We cannot see it. You can, we can, you can see only the first title, the first slide. Nothing else. What could I do? Uh, you should switch to the presentation mode. Then we can see the consequence of your slides. Uh, do you see that consequence? No, we see. It. No. Gabor, click on the avatitesh. The shake? Click on the avatitesh. Uh -huh. <coughs> but where is it? Well, we see it. <laughs> the first line <laughs> is animatrok diabetitis velemencheques naked acrobat. Diabetitis. It's it's a small icon down at the right hand side. Audio. Oh my good gracious! Uh, the bar in the lower bar. There are some um, signs there where you can see plus minus. You you know, see I do not see that. Uh, can that, you see uh, the plus and minus? My, I had to. Maybe I try to share again. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and go to the Oh my good gracious. to the Mitch, share. Mitch, can you help? I, I could share again. Do you see that? No, oh, yes. yes. Excellent. Excellent. Can no, excellent. Consequences. Yes, yes, can you see if we can? So can these go are the artists them. who have always problems with the uh, various uh, computer uh, devices, not the scientists, but this is an exception present. That means uh, if I uh, may continue, the former holistic approach of, uh, of uh, investigating nature splits in two, either uh, a scientific or a an artistic uh, approach uh, is uh, followed by various individuals. And this uh, leads to a single-mindedness, either rational or emotional. The combination is that, uh, in, that's uh, difficult and therefore people get away from each other. Uh, and there are two problems, at least. Mats does not speak about the future. 
it is exact, but doesn't speak about the future. However, on the other hand, uh, we have seen that wellness replaces happiness, and therefore uh, there are problems in the uh, everyday uh, life as well. Now, the possibility to combine rational and emotional uh, aspects is harmony. And uh, I have here an example, this is symmetry, which will be presented in the next uh, slides. Uh, first of all, let us define the meaning of harmony, which have various express aspects. For example, this is an agreement, according to the Oxford Dictionary, uh, then congruity, combination or arrangement of parts to form consistent and orderly whole. And harmonize means uh, be agreeable in artistic effect. Now, I try to apply these concepts to the interaction of molecules, which is a very important uh, phenomenon because it uh, governs, uh, for example, the ac action of drugs and uh, various other uh, problems are, which can be uh, handled by uh, the interaction of uh, various molecules. For example, uh, the natural harmony uh, has to be harmonized, uh, analyzed, and let us see what does it mean in the world of molecules. Uh, as I have uh, told, uh, the aspects of harmony are the following, uh, according to this, uh, this definition, which, which uh, I uh, presented you before. The first is similarity, similarity between two molecules, which we will see is present, and then complementarity, like uh, 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 lock and the key, uh, two molecules may be complementary in their shapes. There's also a, a <clears throat> parallelism with, with tolerance, and molecules are beautiful. You will see several uh, examples for that. I have a lot of uh, uh, illustrations. And uh, symmetry space plays also a, an important role in the world of molecules. Now let us discuss first similarity. Uh, I will show you molecular models uh, and uh, we'll show you that uh, two different molecules which uh, are represented here on the left side are similar uh, in their shapes and also in their structure to a certain aspect. And this similarity leads to a similar behavior in their uh, life, uh, in, in their uh, interaction with life, uh, other molecules of life, and therefore their uh, biological effect will be also similar because of similar shape. And this uh, principle is used uh, vastly in the design of new molecules because now it is possible to design various uh, new drugs uh, or drug candidates simply using uh, the uh, computer. And uh, when the first ideas came, then you can uh, make uh, experiments and a long series of various experiments in order to uh, provide a work, working and effective drug. Now, for example, similarity can be uh, seen also here in a series of uh, pharmacologically active molecules. And uh, then uh, we, you will be able to detect their uh, similarity and also similar behavior and select some of them, which are the best for the pharmaceutical action. Now let us go to complementarity, which I saw, I, as I told, is uh, an analog of the lock and key uh, complementarity. This principle is more than 100 years old. Uh, the late uh, Emil Fischer, a uh, very uh, famous German chemist, uh, established that. And you see how beautifully the various uh, parts of uh, 
an interacting molecular system, reverse transcriptase fit into each other. And this fit is almost perfect. There is only, there are only two small uh, 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 parts where this fit is not uh, perfect, but otherwise uh, you may say that if uh, uh, the fit is fine or as perfect as possible, then the interaction is also stronger. Therefore, better fit is better interaction. This principle can be also used uh, when you will uh, design various uh, drug molecules. Uh, another example is, uh, for that is uh, this protein complex, where on the background you see the protein in a color, and in the foreground you see a DNA uh, segment, which is uh, dis 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 described or uh, displayed in white, and a nice complementarity between these two uh, very difficult and uh, very complicated molecules can be uh, detected. Now let's go to a further aspect, tolerance. Uh, this is also possible in the world of molecules, because if uh, in this, where if you consider this uh, figure, an open <clears throat> part of an enzyme molecule, which has a nice uh, uh, deep hole here, will accept the small interacting molecule, and after exception, it will uh, tolerate and uh, form a closed form, which is much more stable than the, than the uh, former one. And therefore, we can uh, consider this uh, effect or this phenomenon as a tolerance between molecules. They like each other, if I may say that. By another view, you see that uh, the small interacting molecule, the small incoming molecule, which may be a drug, uh, gets closer, approaches to this uh, uh, concave uh, part, and then at the very end, it will be uh, in incorporated by the whole uh, structure in the complex. Now, uh, I would like to speak uh, uh, more, a bit more about beauty, beauty of the molecules, because uh, as uh, uh, an expert in molecules, which who, who worked at least uh, 40, but uh, more than in, uh, rather, rather 50 years with molecules, I liked them. And uh, when the various computer models appeared some 40 years ago, uh, there were some people who discovered that since molecules are part of nature, like other macroscopic objects, as for example, landscapes, plants, animals, or humans, they may also have a certain intrinsic beauty. Now it is possible to model molecules, which are uh, eight to 10 orders of magnitude smaller than, for example, a, a landscape or a, an animal, but uh, our instruments by now are that uh, fine that uh, they can uh, see, if I may extend this uh, expression, may see the molecule and then make an adequate model of that, which can be represented by the computer. And even uh, their, its properties can be uh, also uh, depicted coloring. And you will see uh, different uh, models here, which uh, are, I guess, uh, really beautiful. And uh, also some artists discovered this uh, beauty and therefore they combined the molecules and uh, other uh, objects in their graphics and even in their sculptures, which are now, um, to be seen before various uh, scientific institutes. Now, this is a map DNA, which is uh, a product, or can I say, uh, a 
nice uh, uh, production by uh, the artist who uh, simply combined 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 these two aspects in order to give some uh, some artistic uh, impression in uh, the viewer another possibility to model uh, the dna molecule is uh, depicted here and uh, uh, this uh, figure or this uh, artwork is not uh, used for a scientific interpretation of various uh, for a given uh, molecular process it is only for the viewer who, and to make uh, a, a nice uh, feeling uh, as uh, you feel when you look at a beautiful uh, picture uh, like uh, Mona Lisa or a nice uh, sculpture in the museum and it is now also a quite uh, wide activity by various graphic molecular graphics uh, experts and uh, and also graphics artists to uh, include molecular models in their artworks for example this is an artistic view of the deoxyribonuclein nucleic acid which is uh, which has a, a certain turbulence and uh, and uh, has an as according to me at least uh, a an artistic uh, impression also, which uh, has its uh, effect also in the viewer. For example, uh, uh, artists uh, provided various uh, nice uh, illustrations. Uh, this is diffraction, which uh, shows a molecule uh, above uh, the Earth's uh, surface, maybe we can uh, call it uh, that way <clears throat> and the uh, diffraction which is a special uh, measure measurement method uh, is represented here because uh, in that there are various peaks uh, uh, several peaks uh, which are the result of uh, electron or x-ray diffraction and which can be analyzed in order to get the structure of a, a certain molecule now uh, artists who work for uh, scientific textbooks or other uh, material also combined various molecular models in their uh, their uh, paintings and this is for example uh, the molecular intercellular transport which is uh, also uh, appropriate for understanding a certain phenomena or a certain uh, process but also for uh, for a, a, an artistic uh, impression. Uh, the life cycle is a very nice uh, representation of the circular DNA molecule because it is known that uh, DNA, the uh, uh, inheriting material, uh, is uh, stored in the organism in a circular form and uh, life cycle as it is a good title for that because life is uh, in in stored in a cyclic uh, form and uh, it can be seen that uh, various scientists uh, who are uh, also uh, well trained in graphics they combine their skills and uh, provide such uh, nice figures there are also sculptures as i have told and uh, uh, this is here a sculpture which uh, represents uh, protein molecules and uh, the total impression is that it is a dance a helical dance this uh, sculpture can be seen before the sharing plus research institute in alabama and uh, it is not only the one single uh, possibility, single example, but there are now several other, uh, other several other sculptures to be seen all over the world. And uh, there is also a possibility to make some tricks uh, 
a molecular tiger. If you have a nice computer and you have a molecular model, on the surface you can apply various uh, colors and various uh, 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 shadows, and then a tiger will come out. Uh, the nucleic acid model in the right has a close similarity to a belly dancer. And uh, now uh, these two aspects, uh, uh, nucleic acid as an, uh, uh, the, the inheriting material, that means the key of uh, uh, reproduction is combined with a, an erotically uh, devoted uh, person <coughs> On the right, on the left, pain transmission is represented in this uh, nice uh, figure, and uh, also, as I told, uh, you can understand the mechanism of this molecular phenomena, while uh, you can also uh, like uh, the figure and uh, um, have an artistic uh, uh, impression on that. Now, uh, beauty can be also few functional. For example, in that uh, molecule, which is therefore beautiful, at least to me, because uh, you see the various uh, substituents uh, in a complica complicated and very interesting cubic uh, complex. And only because you see how and which parts of uh, the molecules uh, join, you have and you see a, a certain beauty. This is a functional uh, necessity, which brings uh, the molecule into the group of uh, beautiful uh, artwork. And then uh, the polystyrene, polystyrene surface can be also photographed and then a very special pattern will come out and uh, this could uh, uh, pave the way towards other representations of uh, sub sub uh, uh, sub uh, human measures that means microscopic in the microscopic world because uh, this is much larger than a molecule this uh, surface uh, uh, pattern but uh, the impression is uh, also that you have something new which is not uh, necessarily present in the macroscopic world, but the micro world will show you a new aspect of beauty. This is again water in the aquaporin pore. Uh, that you, you should know that uh, the cell wall has various pores where uh, different uh, proteins are located with uh, channels. And uh, if you see these channels and the arrangement of these channels in the pore, you can understand how various small molecules can go from the one side of the cell wall to the other one. And this is a very, very uh, important process because it also determines uh, heart uh, uh, action and uh, some heart problems can be nicely uh, cured if you uh, apply drugs which are based on the uh, transmission uh, between a cell outside and cell inside. Uh, the ribonucleic acid transcription is uh, given here and you will see how uh, the double helix will uh, this uh, junk and uh, and join again. Now let's go to symmetry, what which I mentioned in the uh, first part of uh, the lecture. Uh, it is a very important uh, concept in the world of molecules. Uh, for example, you may see that. Uh, uh, buckyball structure, which has a high symmetry, a very special symmetry. And uh, this symmetry gives it uh, a very important and very uh, high stability 
therefore its structure in this material is a special one. But uh, the crystal structure of diamond is also symmetrical. It is a, a very nice representation of that uh, special, not special, but uh, cubic symmetry of diamond. And uh, if you consider and uh, look at these uh, pictures, then I guess at least that the very far lying representation of uh, uh, various uh, quantum mechanical uh, theorems or calculations, uh, numbers will get closer to your mind and you understand it better. And also you like it much better if you see and you see that it is nice and beautiful. Here is an inorganic crystal structure, quite uh, difficult and quite complicated one. And, in, uh, and uh, the coloring is also beautiful. And uh, Stefan Immer, who uh, provided that some 20, 20 years ago, I, I'm sure has uh, an extraordinary artif artistic uh, 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 artistic uh, side because he can uh, could could uh, combine various colors that very nicely uh, show you the different parts of the molecule and still uh, provide also an artistic uh, impression. Now, at last, <clears throat> I come to my favorite and uh, very much uh, loved uh, DNA molecule. Uh, this is the, as I told you, this is the material, the molecule of inheritance. And this has a very special tenfold symmetry. This is a cross uh, section of the molecule, of the molecular model uh, with different uh, uh, figures, different uh, colors, uh, showing different parts uh, of the molecule. But this is uh, like a, a, a necklace or, or a very special uh, artistic object, which can be also used uh, in everyday life. Uh, naturally, it is, I guess, uh, about uh, eight to 10 orders of magnitude smaller, but in the impression, it is the same. And what is quite interesting that uh, the tenfold symmetry is very rare in uh, the windows of various cathedrals, uh, either eight or 12 or uh, 16 fold symmetries can be uh, seen in there in such uh, cathedrals, but the Washington National Cathedral is the only one which I know. Sure, I do not know uh, uh, all of these cathedrals, but the only one which I know which has a tenfold symmetry. And therefore, uh, the, the design by Royal Comte, which is, uh, uh, has the title homage to the birth of the world is uh, also can be combined with the nice uh, DNA molecule with its tenfold symmetry. Therefore, I think uh, I could end my lecture with uh, the desire that uh, you could understand more from the world of molecules and uh, maybe uh, exactly thinking people personally uh, feeling people come a bit closer together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, dear speaker. Thank you, Gabor. That's very excellent presentation, brief, uh, but uh, to the point, you know, and compact. And you, uh, with your presentation, you gave us a, a trigger, you know, for many, many questions, at least, you know, for, 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 for me. Um, uh, I, I would like, to, I, I, I take the privilege of being, you know, a moderator, so I would like to ask you, you know, the first question and then I will give uh, to the floor, you know, the, uh, the next ones. I noticed, of course, clearly the correspondence between physics, chemistry, biology and 
social terms. Um, and uh, beauty that you mentioned can yes. be defined then as uh, with global natural principles, those which are basics of life like symmetry and harmony. It was a question that uh, was um, uh, you know, uh, given uh, in one of our past lectures about beauty. So uh, with the progress of our colloquia, it, it is shaped somehow the answer of beauty. As I said, you know, basics of life, symmetry, harmony. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, can you say a, a few words more uh, about how do you perceive the harmony in the covalent and non-covalent uh, bonds of molecules, please? Uh, it's uh, in the world of covalent bonds, that means the covalent bond molecules, uh, these are in general smaller ones and therefore simpler. And symmetry is a very uh, important uh, ordering principle among them. Therefore, very symmetric molecules uh, are uh, better understood in terms of symmetry. Larger uh, biologically uh, active molecules have no direct symmetry or, or rarely, but for example, just DNA, the DNA strand has a very special symmetry, which is very important in, also in, in the action. Uh, therefore, if I want to give a simple uh, answer in the world of small molecules, small organic and inorganic molecules, uh, symmetry is important. In the world of uh, biologically active large molecules like proteins, it is less important. But again, in case of solid surface, solid structures, symmetry is again very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, and a second one, the last one, you had mentioned also in one of your um, publications, I have read, as I said, you know, at least the last 30 years, I have noticed, you know, your interest in this um, duality of uh, molecules and, and, um, and harmony. Uh, you said about a, a connection, a coincidence between a guido paying tribute to creation yes. and the molecular task basis of life, which is the deoxyribonucleic acid, which is striking, you know, this coincidence. Can you expand a bit more, please, on that? Yes, uh, uh, this uh, picture, I, I have stolen it, unfortunately, to me at least, unfortunately, because uh, the science title page in the early eight, the 80s published uh, this combination of two figures, two uh, representations of the DNA cross-section and the uh, creation window. This was uh, the interaction for the uh, venue of molecular graphics that was that was that time uh, coming up. Okay. Thanks. Any question, please? Thank you very much, Ioannis. Uh, 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 yes. Should we invite uh, invite somebody also for asking Katitan uh, Kulkakova? Oh yes. I yes. suppose you that Klaus uh, Mainz would like to ask something. I I just had the feeling he appeared for a minute. Klaus? Yeah, um, as president, um, I have to consider both sides, uh, science and arts. And uh, I have no uh, special uh, uh, question to the first talk, but uh, a general remark um, coming up uh, with the second talk. Um, you uh, started with the distinction of two paradigms. On the one side, you said uh, analytical and uh, pictorial are feeling and thinking, and these are the arts. And on the other side, digital mathematical approach, the other paradigm, and this is mainly natural sciences. And uh, I think uh, chemistry as uh, it was presented is a wonderful example to show that uh, it is not sufficient in the natural sciences to be digital. Digital only means computation. And that, of course, can be reduced to a computer. But it, uh, means, for ex it means mainly intuition. You must have an idea in chemistry, even in mathematics, by the way. You must have a geometrical intuition, a shape, a picture whatsoever. 
and digital, it's like in music, Violetta. In uh, music, you must have an intuition on the one side, and then you must write down your uh, uh, symbols. In your case, they are different from mathematical symbols, but in principle, it is the same kind um, of uh, approach. And my uh, second uh, uh, remark concerns chemistry, especially. I think all these uh, nice pictures of complex structures would not be possible today by human brain alone, because these interactions are so complex, you need the help of a computer. And so a new um, a discipline um, uh, um, emerged in, uh, in the past, computational uh, chemistry. And without that, uh, these nice pictures would not be possible. But I think a layman must be cautious. <laughs> in, in nature, there are no red molecules or yellow ones or uh, these kind of nice strictures. These are more or less fictions. But uh, fictions with the support of a computer to illustrate these uh, complex uh, uh, structures. And so human semantics is, uh, that means semantics of uh, human chemists are necessary to understand uh, these uh, pictures. I think that must be uh, distinguished. And uh, then in any case, we see the great similarity of human creativity on both sides in arts as well as in the natural sciences. Thank you. Thank you very much. Violetta. Yeah, wonderful. So, in fact, we f we feel all the time correspondences. I su suppose that all of us have this uh, desire to make these correspondences. And I would like to invite again somebody who would like also to make uh, uh, to to bring some questions also to Katica. I would like, uh, dear Gabo, uh, to to thank you also very much. It was fascinating, and uh, I I just. Uh, uh, suppose uh, that we can open new worlds, new dimensions regarding this uh, incredible uh, projection of uh, reality inspiring imagination. Uh, I would like to ask uh, if would like somebody to, to ask Katita. Um, I myself, um, I would like also to to congratulate her because I also wrote, uh, read a lot of uh, your uh, uh, writings, Katita. And I was also interested when you, uh, when you spoke about this um, old magic uh, rain um, um, rituals. And uh, I would like to ask you, you didn't speak about this old ritual. Um, if you could tell us, um, about these all very deep levels of the traditional cultures who have uh, internet uh, universal dimension, because you said it's not only here in Macedonia, or uh, but it's also universal. You are. Uh, I would like to ask you about this co correspondence between deep levels of tradition and universal. Uh, projection of these deep le levels. Thank you, Violeta. Uh, if we come back to the past and to the, the past uh, form of culture, folkloric one and the magical one, etc., prehistorical one, pre notional, pre rational types of uh, meaning of thinking and of culture, we shall find the universal matrix of our world. So we are closed in this deep and old level of the evolution. Uh, to me, it's very important to say at this moment that uh, to to ritualize, for example, one kind of uh, pattern, of method, of interpretation, it is necessary in order to be scientific, theoretically valid, 
to to can repeat the same method almost the same in different artistic uh, constellation and um, this ritual this ritual this ritual can be very efficacy in the um, sense of uh, psychotherapeutic role of art and literature especially the word the, the, the art of words the literature uh, can can be very therapeutic can help not not uh, not in uh, uh, strictly medicine uh, signification meaning but can help uh, uh, development and um, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, a higher development of our ownness and our vision of the world, of ourselves and of the other people and subject. So it's important to read and to try to understand the, the literature and. Uh, uh, to know ourselves and the other people uh, in order to to understand each other because we can make a dialogue without uh, and uh, endless dialogue but it is important to understand each other to understand the world to understand some phenomenon uh, they are um, which are universal archetypal so uh, can be ritualized and can repeat in the history and cannot be annulated because we want to be thank and you this, thank you and this aspect of sacrifice this is a, a, a yeah. necessity to sacrifice in order to give yes. birth to a, a new yes René Girard uh, has uh, at least three very important book about this uh, uh, culture of sacrifice and he he thinks that any cultural system and tradition uh, with identity is uh, based on uh, on sacrifice even intentional sacrifice uh, taking into account for example some mythical stories myths they they uh, their narration is uh, very often connected with uh, with some sacrifice of uh, the uh, youngest uh, child of the daughter of Iphigenia of I don't know what in order to to hmm, to to uh, keep calm the 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 gods uh, or the enemies or to invoke the the uh, wellness uh, for uh, the people for the collectivity for the community so uh, i think the the, the this collective uh, unconscious and conscient is difficult to change it so only the different uh, specific historical constellation and situation uh, modificate but art can can um, can help can uh, activate this process of uh, of uh, be more uh, honest, be more conscient, huh? be um, more, more uh, even be better. <laughs> I, I would like to ask you if we could, uh, if I could send, if we could inform, I suppose very many uh, um, our, from our public would like to ask you more. Uh, may I give your mail? And I just want to ask again, and then I, I would like to give the word to Ioannis. Is somebody who would like to um, to ask directly Katica something? Uh, I myself, I shall ask you about the poem, the poem you presented. I'm very curious to see the poem. Uh, is somebody who would like to ask Katica something? Yes, Gabor Gurt. Yeah. Uh, I, could you tell me some more words about Goodeville? Because there is a phrase that uh, the way to hell is paved with goodwill. Therefore, I guess it is a very broad concept. And in that uh, that Roman, uh, that uh, Roman which you mentioned, this uh, Prince Marcos church, was that uh, 
uh, also discussed. Uh -huh. Which is this novel by by whom? <clears throat> by uh, you you mentioned a, a Roman that uh, Prince Marco's Church. Uh -huh. the Roman. Prince Marco Church is Marco Monastery, Monastery of Marco, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, very near to Skopje. And there are many churches from the Marco epoch. Uh, uh, only in Skopje we have St. Andrea and probably St. Nicola, but connected with Marco, two churches uh, in the canyon of Matka. But in Prilep, uh, in Prilep, uh, you can still visit the Markoviculi, so the fortress of Marco, which is a remarkable place, uh, not only culturally and artistically, but also, uh, uh, also naturally, because uh, this uh, this um, mountain full of uh, artistical um, uh, stones. Uh, and with um, one impressive uh, monastery of Treskavets, uh, Treskavets monastery, uh, I would like to invite you everybody to come and to see. It's really uh, exceptionally interesting and mystical, and um, I will um, use the term uh, by Jung, I, I prefer Jung uh, than Freud, for example. Uh, the term of uh, mystical participation in the art and in the art of war, in the poetry, and in this kind of place like like Treskavets and like like fortress by uh, Marco in Prilep are really full of these uh, mystical places. So mystical can participate in many contemporary things even even in digital art <laughs> it yeah. depends of the of the approach thank you very much thank you thank you Ioannis, Ioannis. Yes, thank you yeah mm -hmm. anybody else for Katica to any question no and uh, let us uh, go for to the next any question for the next speaker i had the Privilege and I ask already. So, anybody would like to ask um, uh, our Professor Zabo any question about the harmony of molecules? Yes, okay. it is Zvedor. Hello. Hello, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I yes, have a question for Madame Kulakova, but I raised hand, but you, you didn't see. Ah, so, business, so your just <laughs> shortly. Yes, I'm uh, I'm Professor Doctor Svebor Sechak, Dean of the Academy of Dance, Alma Mater Europea, and I got this link from uh, Emeritus Professor Doctor Ludwig Toplak. Uh, so I'm just guest here, but if you don't mind, I would just uh, comment and and of course. A question for Madame Kulakova. Uh, so my 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 idea is my question is you mentioned um, Bachtin and his concept of carnival. Uh, do you agree that uh, maybe we can also connect it with the concept of intertextual analysis, uh, later developed by Julia Kristeva and the others, or maybe with uh, Bart and Derrida and their concepts of uh, death of the author and deconstruction as well as uh, Michel Foucault and his um, idea of uh, uh, diffused authorship and the self of the author. So there is not just one main author. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are a lot of influences. There are a lot of pre uh, There is a, a social surrounding, cultural surrounding and everything. So uh, can you compare your analysis to intertextual analysis, which would analyze all the the net of intertextual uh, influences, other authors, and everyone who who uh, compared to the work. So, if if for example, I am an artist. If if we consider a theatrical performance, there is not just one author. There are a lot of uh, authors for one theatrical piece: yes. a composer, choreographer, uh, even performers. Etc. So when you analyze a poem, do you think that you can also uh, analyze that in the way as if it is an intertextual 
let's say, um, <clears throat> a piece that yeah. is not just one person talking. Mm. The mouth exactly, of the exactly. Very good question and comment because intertextuality shows that uh, behind or uh, inside the uh, visual or real author of one uh, literary text uh, exists one other or more others from the past, from the present also, and also some invisible or anonymous author from uh, oral tradition. Uh, there is no, uh, there is no uh, absolutely original text because any text, uh, artistical text, uh, um, is based uh, on the uh, on the on, on the linguistic base first, and uh, language is memory, language is culture, etc., etc. Language is uh, um, uh, assimilation of uh, all our feelings and memories, etc., etc. Uh, so uh, I, I think uh, the good poem should uh, uh, make dialogue, intertextual dialogue with other texts other opinion, other cultures and other approaches. Uh, I was, um, I, I had uh, for 10 years or more uh, course of uh, about intertextuality on the faculty for the MA uh, studies. So I'm well involved in this uh, topic and, um, and uh, uh, we can speak and we can write uh, about uh, maybe, maybe next year one uh, lecture about intertextuality okay thank you very much thank you very much let's let's keep in touch please uh, yeah thank you anyone else any question oh i have a question for katisha and um, actually i i read your one of the articles the, inter, uh, the, the intercultural strategy as a form of cultural economy. Um, I think the article is very interesting. You, you're very proactive for people to think. Um, um, one of the uh, interesting things uh, that I want to ask you is, I mean, this is not a, uh, very related to what you talked about today, that because you use a cultural economy, so how to, um, uh, to put these two words together uh, is it, very interesting. So because economy, sometimes we can judge the economy could be bad, economy could, could be good. But when we put culture, uh, that will be a problem. Is any culture can be bad, culture can be good. And we put them together. What is bad culture economy? What is bad or uh, good? Culture economy. I think the, this is a concept that's very interesting. So um, and the very um, uh, stimulating for people to think about another thing. This is a short article. I read it online yesterday. I found this very this is very interesting. But uh, maybe you never thought about this. If you can give us give me this um, um, insight of your thinking, I really appreciate. That. <laughs> Thank you. Very shortly, briefly, I will say that uh, cultural econom economy is connected to it interculturality, culturality, not to it multiculturality. I think that comparing multiculturalism with interculturalism, interculturalism it is much more economical than multiculturalism because a radical multiculturalism leads to isolated uh, languages, languages communities, uh, religious communities, uh, ethnical communities, and other communities. And interculturality means existing of uh, lingua franca, so minimum of understanding on the, uh, in the society uh, and Every society, by definition, is is uh, uh, is uh, uh, multi-ethnical or multi-linguistic. But as a nation, as a state, as an institution, we we, we should uh, 
we should belong to to this uh, uh, higher level of community nation one so we should uh, in order to keep the dialogue and understanding and human relations we should uh, promote interculturality this is uh, more economical even in financial etc uh, sense but respecting all differences respecting the differences but find some uh, minimum of common understanding and common language and common institutional uh, uh, what is it uh, um, uh, values so you mean actually um, uh, we using an economic way to promote the uh, interculture right. you, you know uh, the term of economy or economy uh, uh, in uh, Christianity means to sacrifice sacrifice uh, something a little small things in order to get uh, uh, bigger thing for all uh, 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 state or nations you know uh, any mutual um, community needs uh, tolerance to be tolerant Standard. and to share to share uh, uh, different values uh, so to keep dialogue yeah that's multiculturalism is against is against uh, is against dialogue multiculturalism is uh, is very 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 uh, dangerous but why why do you come up with the muddy view <laughs> So, but it's like uh, just like a music. First, you we have to make analysis, yeah. to discover similarities yeah. and differences, and yes. then we can understand. But, 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 more but, but, about okay, what does it say? You honest? Yeah, I wish. Uh, Michael, um, yeah. can you please uh, mute uh, the speaker? They are speaking there. We hear what they say. Little, but... can you please mute? Bro, thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, yes, anybody, any, any more, any question rather than comment? Okay, Yoletta, can you, would you like to say something? We, <laughs> we finished. Yeah, yeah, I, I would like, uh, so I just said uh, before that it's like in music, we have to first of make analysis and discovering similarities, differences, and then we can act in order to understand more about what happens. I, I would like to ask Gabor, um, uh, uh, it was so really so interesting to create so many um, uh, aspects of harmonies, and uh, you spoke also about uh, these um, symmetries and so, um, and I'm thinking about a lecture of Klaus Mainzer who is coming in the next semester uh, about uh, breaking symmetry. And uh, so um, I would like just to ask you in um, uh, scientific uh, researching, are there aspects of bro breaking symmetries who in fact has a function in the art, a very strong function in the art. Only symmetry, only harmony is not enough. We need some, some things in order to destroy uh, a little part of the beauty, absolute beauty, in order to create other dimensions. Sure, in science, breaking symmetry is also a very important aspect. Therefore, symmetry breaking processes, uh, they have a very special, uh, very special, uh, studies also on them. Therefore, it is a new aspect. Thank you very much. If I will extend my lecture, that I uh, then I, I will include also breaking symmetries. So, but it was in fact so interesting. So I I could imagine that it is uh, very important also to define the beauty, the uh, this uh, definition of the beauty from this point of view, because beauty uh, uh, was all the time changing. <laughs> during the centuries. So in this new kind of beauty you are speaking and is very conviction. Uh, I was very, very, and I could not stop making uh, uh, connections to musical world in my mind. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. 
Uh, actually, I read an article about the protein structure. It's a, it's a rainy music. <laughs> the, the protein structure, someone says like a very, very, like, very like music. Some, someone, someone trying to use that structure to make music composition to the, to, 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 to the, to the proteins. So and it's interesting. very stimulating, very, very interesting uh, theory. So we are very happy to announce uh, Johannes had uh, this uh, idea also uh, to um, um, present our meetings, our colloquium, which are in fact only impasses. It is the beginning of uh, long uh, stories and long researching we, we could make. So we are presenting a copies, a recording of this colloquium on our site, and also in uh, the material, the material will be there. And if you would like to communicate uh, with each other, it's uh, very possible. And I suppose it, uh, it will happen. But anyway, Johannes. Yeah, that will be uploaded yeah. in, the, in, in, the, in the Academy's you know, site, uh, the recording of these presentations, as well as summaries with details, with details of affiliations and emails. So each one can you know, freely come in touch with, this, with the presenter. So this is a task from uh, our academy to record and to document whatever we do in a you know in a summarized way. So that is the end I think of to, to this evening's you know event. And uh, thank you very much for presenting. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, for always being present and supporting this series uh, of Colloquia. Thank you very much, each, each all of you and each one separately. And we look forward to see you uh, in our next. In 15 days, I think, the next um, uh, colloquium. Two weeks. In two weeks. <laughs> okay. So, thank you very okay. much, Anis. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. <laughs>